All right, there's a letter that has been signed by over a hundred economists from the United States and from the rest of the world that has been sent to the U.S. Capitol because they are urging lawmakers from both houses to uh, pass some sort of legislative solution to, you know, diminish the impact of Judge Grisey's ruling uh, that has, as you all know, has impacted Argentina's economy so much. And joining us today is Mark Weisbrot. He is uh, an economist and uh, co-director of the uh, Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C. How are you, Mark? Thanks for joining us today. Great. Thanks to be here with you. Okay, Mark, um, I'm, I'd like to talk to you because I know that um, you guys helped circulate the letter that I just mentioned. Uh, and my first question, of course, is, you know, what are the chances that the U.S. Congress is going to do anything? Um, uh, is, is, is Congress going to respond to this? And, and if it does, what kind of legislative action could they take that could mitigate this and in some way help Argentina? Well, I don't think they're going to respond right away, uh, but they could at some point. They could rewrite um, the uh, Foreign uh, Sovereign Immunity Act, for example, because that was supposed to protect uh, sovereign creditors from, that's a, a law, U.S. law that was supposed to protect sovereign, uh, sovereign debtors from this kind of, a, of an outcome. Uh, there are other legislative uh, measures that they could take. I mean, it, you know, it, the, what the judge did could even be considered unconstitutional. So they could, that would be for a court decision, but the, they could write legislation to make sure that the court is not allowed to uh, take this money, for example, that they, I'm sorry, that the, yeah, that the district court or lower courts wouldn't be allowed to take money that was destined uh, for legitimate uh, creditors and hold it hostage in order to pay uh, the vulture funds. Now, I'm interested in what you just mentioned, because you said that uh, a court could even declare this unconstitutional. It's interesting considering that this case went all the way to the Supreme Court in the United States, and uh, it is the Supreme Court that decided that what Judge Grisey had ruled uh, was, well, they didn't say it was accurate, but they refuse to take Argentina's case, which in some way means that they validate what the judge said. So is do you think that there's a possibility that this could actually end up being ruled unconstitutional? Well, I don't think so. It doesn't look like it now because the Supreme Court didn't do its job. I mean, here's a case that was clearly, uh, it was bad law. It was a bad decision. It had very, uh, I mean, it was unprecedented. Uh, there's no precedent for uh, trying to take, again, take hostage the other creditors in order to force a decision. I mean, if they had just ruled that Argentina should pay uh, the vulture funds, right. uh, that would have been a different story. But to actually say that you can't pay legitimate creditors, the vast majority of them, that is really unusual. It's an extreme decision. It, has, uh, it doesn't have any backing in the law. Uh, and it has enormous ramifications both for the international financial system, for the U.S. Uh, financial system, obviously for Argentina as well. And how, could, yet, how could this impact the U.S. economy, for example? Well, the U.S. financial system uh, handles uh, over $200 billion of debt for emerging markets. And uh, they're going to look elsewhere because this is not a reliable judicial system under which to issue debt. As a, after this, after this ruling, right. Um, so, some some people were even saying that they uh, they were considering what happened with Judge Grisey, some instance of um, legal insecurity. Do you agree with that? Yes, it is legal insecurity. I mean, this was uh, you know, it's hard to see this as something other than a political decision, because it's so extreme and because it violates you know fundamental legal principles of equity. Uh, it's very hard to see this as anything other than political. And it does raise questions about even the independence of our Supreme Court, which have been raised before, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, and this is something that uh, the local government uh, in the last few months, especially as, as uh, the deadline for, the, for a potential agreement between Argentina and the holdouts uh, was nearing, this is something that the government kept saying. And they even questioned uh, Judge Grisey's alleged um, um, 
you know, uh, unbiased uh, decision. They, they just, they kept saying, they even accused him of being uh, uh, on their side uh, and that he was a very, uh, very biased judge, that his decision was not impartial. So um, it's, it's interesting that uh, you seem, and, and the letter also, even, even though it doesn't say it, it seems to agree to some extent uh, on these accusations. Is that correct? Well, I think most, I mean, people can speculate as to motives, but yeah, I mean, almost, you know, it wasn't hard to get uh, economists to sign this, and it's economists across the political spectrum, too. And you had the IMF, of course, wanted to file an amicus brief, a friend of the court brief, on behalf of Argentina. And they were uh, strangely blocked from doing so by the U.S. Treasury Department. And that's another event which really hasn't been explained, but there's some interesting politics there to be sure, because uh, I don't think that the Obama administration as a whole, uh, or the White House, really wanted the Supreme Court not to review the case. Right. And yet Treasury took that action to stop the IMF from helping. And, you know, I wrote a little bit about that to try and figure out what happened there. Right. However, the uh, the Obama administration filed an amicus brief, and uh, they were you know, allegedly no, in favor of Argentina. They didn't file one. That was the big thing. You see, they didn't. They didn't. They weren't asked by the Supreme Court to file one, and they did not file. Uh, although some people argue they could have filed even without being invited, mm -hmm. uh, they did not file at the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court could very easily have taken the fact that they uh, that the U.S. Treasury blocked the IMF from filing on behalf of Argentina. They could have taken that as the uh, the opinion of the U.S. government, and that could be one reason they didn't review it. Now, there's something that uh, a lot of people have been saying here, especially uh, in the government concerning uh, Grisey, uh, and it's, this is something that the New York Times agreed with, and I'd like to know what your opinion is. And the, the, the New York Times said that he was way over, he said he didn't know what he was doing. Um, it was not a matter of being biased or not. Um, he just thought he was ruling uh, or he was ruling accurately, and in fact, he was creating a huge financial mess on an international scale. Is this a possibility as well? Yes, well, Floyd Norris had an interesting piece, uh, I think, a week or so ago in the New York Times, I think that's what you're referring to, where he uh, looked at what some of the judge's statements at a recent hearing and showed that he really wasn't aware of the whole, uh, he didn't know much about the debt portfolio and who Argentina owed money to and what currencies and the kind of things that he needed to know in order to even implement his decision. And this was coming up, you know, quite a long time after he had, uh, years after he made his decision. So he still didn't know these, th these, these basic things. So yeah, that does look bad. And that's why I say it really is an abdication of responsibility on, on the part of the Supreme Court. You could also say the Court of Appeals that uh, mm. took the case above him, right. because uh, that's what they're supposed to do when a case is decided incompetently and uh, it has consequences, they should, be, they should be reviewing it. Now, Argentina has been very confrontational about this, especially in the last few months, and they've been accusing him personally of being responsible of this that's happening. So um, what do you think, what's your opinion on the way that Argentina handled the case? Do you think that being so confrontational uh, confrontational helped in any way? Do you think they should have maybe adopted a different stance? Uh, they should have been more, uh, instead of refusing to meet face to face, maybe they had decided to meet face to face before we wouldn't have reached uh, the deadline and maybe a, dis a disaster could have been averted. Do you think that um, Argentina's behavior in, in any way could have affected the outcome? Well, it's tough to say. I mean, you know, you know they did offer the vultures a uh, uh, an offer that would have given them uh, a 300 percent return uh, in six years, which is pretty good. And they didn't take that. There wasn't a lot of indication that they were going to take anything that Argentina could afford in the sense of paying them. See, the problem is that just to pay them, uh, they would open themselves up to uh, lawsuits from other uh, from from other creditors that accepted the restructuring, right. so that was the problem. And there wasn't anything. I don't know. There was anything coming from the vulture saying 
that they, for example, could uh, postpone this decision until after. And, th and that's what I think the court could have done, too, even if they really wanted to decide in favor of the vultures. They could have at the very least postponed it right. until after December. Argentina asked Rousse to, uh, to um, issue a stay at least until the end of the year so that the Rufo clause could expire. And uh, uh, yeah. Rousse gave the opportunity to make that decision to the, to the holdouts, uh, and they, of course, said no. So um, that's, that's how we ended up uh, not being able to find an agreement. Now, final question, Mark. Um, and this is something that this nobody knows right now. Uh, but is Argentina in a default or not? Because because right now the economy minister is giving a press conference and he says that um, Argentina is not in a default. Uh, Argentina tried to pay, and it's not Argentina's responsibility that it couldn't pay. It was the judge who decided to freeze uh, Argentina's first payment. Uh, that was uh, you know it, they tried to do it uh, by the end of last month, and uh, and Judge Grisé froze it. So. Uh, both the president and the economy minister have said that they're going to have to find a new term for when you try to pay and somebody else uh, freezes or, or bans you from paying. Technically, that's not a default. What do you think? I think that's true. I mean, uh, you know, it is really the court that's it's an unprecedented thing. You have a, a, a debtor that wants to pay and can afford to pay and has actually deposited the money for payment. And the, the normal working of the banking system would be for those that money, uh, it's over $500 million, uh, to be distributed to the bondholders. And the court is preventing them from doing so. It's really the court that's forcing a default, and it's not Argentina's default. Well, allegedly, negotiations are still ongoing now uh, without the Argentine government's involvement. And uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Hopefully this ends well and soon. Thank you so much for joining us, Mark. It's been a pleasure. Uh, we'll be back with more soon. Thank you. Thanks.